the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> On the agenda is approval of the agenda. Move to approve the agenda of December 15, 2015, regular meeting as presented. Second. Okay, the motion and the second. All in favor of saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Next is the approval of the consent agenda item. Move to approve the consent agenda item as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor of saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Next, we have public participation. Oh, okay. Dr. Lindsay. How about you do what? Oh, oh, okay. Oh. Then, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry, Dr. Lindsay. Okay, next is the report of the superintendent, Dr. Lindsay. Um, you have some uh, information in your packet, uh, including a couple notes of appreciation. Uh, one of them that I did want to point out uh, was from uh, Chris Overly. A uh, very nice letter uh, regarding the recent food drive and donations from, uh, from the district, and, and in particular mentioned uh, some, uh, some staff members that helped load <coughs> and, and that sort of thing. It's a really nice, uh, uh, nice uh, note of appreciation from, uh, from her. Um, Bond issue project update. Um, not a lot has happened uh, since the last meeting, although uh, both the middle school and the high school chillers are now set and in place. Uh, uh, the electricity has, has been uh, connected with them. Uh, the, the old piping has been torn out, and uh, so that's kind of the last piece that has to go in is the new piping. Uh, condensers uh, will be set for both middle school and high school buildings uh, that will be done over Christmas. Uh, up at uh, Bloomsdale, the ener energy management uh, progress or uh, installations in progress uh, should be completed um, probably toward the end of, of January uh, to get that finalized. Uh, and then of course, uh, the, um, with two bid packages left, uh, the one dealing with Bloomsdale Elementary with the concession building should be rolling out in January. Uh, then with the uh, final bid package for the other improvements to go out uh, uh, fairly quickly after that. Um, any questions on bond issue projects at, at this point? I, I'm, I'm really anxious to get these last two bid packages out and get that information back because uh, that will give us a real good feel for, for where we are and make some uh, kind of final decisions on exactly uh, uh, what we get completed uh, uh, moving forward, and, and especially with this coming up. Mm -hmm. So uh, it would be good to get that information. Um, of course, the, uh, the annual school board election is coming up on April 5th, uh, 2016. Today was the uh, first day of filing, and uh, both of our incumbents, uh, uh, Terry McDaniel and Richard Rudolph, uh, were there this morning and filed. Uh, no one else has filed at this point. But I appreciate uh, their willingness to serve another term on the board if so elected, and, and uh, appreciated them coming in and filing right away this morning so I don't sit around and worry about uh, <laughs> whether or not they're going to come in and, and show up. Uh, we did have some coffee going for them. And I think I promised Mr. Rudolph a donut, which I didn't deliver on. <laughs> so, uh, maybe, maybe at some point in the future I can get that, get that donut for you. Um, Kindergarten registration, uh, those dates have been set. Uh, St. Jim Elementary, April 2nd, and Bloomsdale Elementary, April 9th. Uh, of course, there will be information that goes out to the public in the future uh, about when they can start scheduling to, uh, uh, or start calling to uh, either schedule for kindergarten registration. Uh, we do encourage our parents to uh, uh, bring their children up for kindergarten registration. It gives us a much better feel for numbers and, and that uh, uh, kind of thing. But uh, it's a little too early to call and, and start scheduling, scheduling yet. There will be some additional information that goes out. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we had a food service review. Um, it's uh, in 
audit that takes place by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. It's extremely involved. Uh, they send someone on site. She's here a couple days, and, and they look at all the paperwork, and they look at our processes, and, and make sure that uh, our our menus and the food that we serve meet all those those federal requirements that we don't necessarily like, but uh, uh, that we have to meet. Um, you know, as far as our daily menu selections, and then there's a weekly uh, guideline we have to fall in with those uh, within those limits, and then also on a monthly basis. And uh, we have a couple things that uh, um, that we're going to have to clean up a little bit, but uh, overall it was a very good review. Um, the uh, uh, lady that did the review said it was one of the best that, that she had done, and, and uh, uh, she just thought that, that we did an excellent job. With uh, you know, there's so much paperwork anytime you're dealing with with uh, federal programs and, and federal government uh, reimbursements and, and that sort of thing. There's just so much paperwork. That Cheryl and, and uh, Janet Schwent does a lot of the, the paperwork side of it, uh, and then the ladies uh, in, in the two kitchens just do an excellent job for us. And, and, uh, uh, we were very, very pleased with, uh, with the review. Um, another thing you may have heard a little bit about uh, is the uh, reauthorization of the, uh, the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. Uh, we've been, been under uh, No Child Left Behind for the past uh, several years, 15 or so. And uh, it has been replaced, uh, finally, with uh, the Every Student Succeeds Act. Uh, we don't have a real good feel for exactly what that means for us, but we do know that it's going to shift a lot of the uh, responsibility for accountability and, and those kinds of things to the state uh, and put it at the federal level. Uh, we feel like it's going to give us uh, more local control options. Uh, we think that it's um, really going to be a tremendous improvement uh, from, uh, from what we've had in the past with, uh, with No Child Left Behind. So we're, we're still learning about it. It uh, just has happened in the last week or two. And uh, because there are several things that have been kind of handed to the states, uh, the states don't necessarily know exactly how they're going to go about doing all those things just yet. So uh, you know, we'll, we'll learn more about that as, as we go through that process. But uh, we, we definitely think it's a welcome um, Dr. Flea, you want to talk about backpacks for Friday? Yes. Um, I just want to give you a quick update on our Backpack for Fridays program that we run at St. Genevieve Elementary and Zinsdale Elementary. Um, this is a totally, this is a program that is totally funded by our local businesses and community members. Um, we send a backpack of food home for basically the weekend for students that qualify for the assistance. Um, the program goes for 36 weeks. So our first backpack went home on Friday, September 11th, and our last backpack will go home on May 13th. And so that is four, you know, four menus every week that goes, or every month that goes home. So right now we're in the process of sending um, two extra weeks home because you know we're gonna be off for two weeks for Christmas break. So we're getting those home to those families right now. Um, a backpack costs $320 for the entire school year. And with our contributions, we have been able to increase the number of backpacks that we are providing. Um, in the past, we've been doing 45. And this year, we were able to bump it up to 50. And we send 31 backpacks home at St. John Elementary and 19 at Bloomsdale. And um, we're just very pleased with the program. And really appreciate all of the support from our community. Any questions on, on that? Uh, also, do you want to go ahead and do safety reports? Yes, sir. Um, I just wanted to make you aware you have some safety reports in your board packets, but um, we were notified that the Missouri School Boards Association Center for Education and Safety was giving out a grant, a school safety grant. And with our incident with um, the message that went out that there was an active shooter in the high school, I think that was in September, um, October maybe. When, when uh, that happened, we did a debriefing and, and we found that we really needed more radios on the St. Jen campus at the elementary, the middle school, and the high school because there were different messages that went out because of the radio capabilities. 
So um, we filled out the application and applied for the grant, and we were awarded the grant. Um, Dr. Lindsay just signed the paperwork, and I'll mail it off tomorrow. Um, so we will be buying 35 two, two-way radios that will be put out throughout this campus. Um, Bloomsdale Elementary already has enough radios for every staff member out there. Lori took care of that a few years ago. Oops, there you are. A few years ago, so she's all set. So we're hoping to expand the communication capabilities here on this campus with this grant. So we're very excited and pleased to do that. Really want to commend Dr. Cleek to you on, on that grant. Uh, I think that's all I had under report to superintendent. So uh, we'll do principal reports now. And I'm not sure, uh, Mr. Haney's not here. There is a large contingent of uh, replacements, though. It, does it really take this many people to replace Mr. Haney? Or? <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm not sure. So do we want to start with the high school, or, or do we want to start with elementary? And, and build to the the high school. I think that's the way. Is, is that the way you think we should go? Okay, uh, Lori or Jerry, which which one of you would like to uh, jump in there first? Okay, we've had a busy month at Bloomsdale Elementary again. Um, we had a faculty meeting. We had mid-quarter grades go home. Um, second grade and third grade had MRI training. We had a half day to raise money for the playground, and we raised one hundred and seventy dollars. For the playground, um, we're going to decorate it and make more games that the kids can play, learning, play, learning games on the playground. Um, we collected box tops and we collected 2,743 box tops at 10 cents each, which was awesome. So second grade brought in the most and they earned a pizza party for bringing in the most box tops. Um, Miss Vogt, our new nurse, went around to each class and did a 10 minute hand washing and the cold and flu um, session with the students. Ms. Culligan from Missouri Extension Office did nutrition classes with first and second graders. We had a new program this year from the Correctional Center called Puppies for Parole, and it's some Correctional Center officers that come and talk to third grade students about drug awareness and um, stranger danger, but each time they come, they bring dogs with them and it teaches them how to approach dogs and how to handle strange dogs, which we thought was important. The kids are loving it. Um, every Friday, we have started a new Silver Spoon Award for the cafeteria. Um, the class that shows the most respect and cleans up after their stuff in the cafeteria gets the Silver Spoon Award for the week. We do Hall of Fame papers every other week. We have student-led announcements now. This. Um, each month, a different grade level is sending students up to read about habits. And we also still do the AR wall that they signed for 100, 200, and 300 points. Um, on December 1st, we had an intruder drill, and we did it a little bit differently this time. We warned all the students that we were going to be having the drill, and the call would be coming over the radio. But the teachers didn't know where the intruder was going to be. So I went to Coach Kreitler in the gym and said, will you make the call and say that the intruder's in the gym? So then the teachers had to follow their training, their Alice training, and they could either evacuate or they could lock down and barricade the door. And they did an awesome job. They followed the training. So I was really proud of them and the students. Um, December 2nd, we had our APR celebration luncheon for the teachers and the students. We had a family fun night on December 3rd. It was Polar Express theme. Parents and students made reindeer food. They took pictures with Santa Claus. They wrote letters to Santa. They made Christmas wreaths and they enjoyed cookies and hot chocolate. Um, on December 4th, we had an awards assembly for perfect attendance and honor roll. And we did a running of the gym where when the kids' names were called, they got to run through the S pattern and do the high fives. And they really liked that. Um, we had PTO Santa shop where the kids get to shop and buy little things for their loved ones and we had tons of parent volunteers. We appreciate all that help. And last night we had a second and third grade Christmas program where um, it was aliens who came to school 
and the school children taught them about Christmas. It was a good program. So that was it at Blue and Sale. Good evening, everybody. Uh, we've had a busy month, too, also at St. Genevieve Elementary. Um, on November 18th, we had our APR celebration luncheon, and we uh, wiggled around the schedule and were able to have everybody have a full hour off of lunch and they completely enjoyed their barbecue and time off. So thanks for that, it was, it was marvelous. They had nothing to say but big thanks. And so um, kindness and gratitude seemed to be our theme in November and December. We had a lot of good acts of goodwill. We did awesome with our food drive that had finished up last month when we spoke and so we collected 2,350 items, and Mrs. Jenkins' class collected the most with over 300, so we had a special luncheon with them. And then St. Vincent de Paul came and picked it all up, and the fifth grade students helped them load it up, and it was really awesome. And then our Shop with a Cop coin drive raised quite a bit of money, and I forgot to put the amount, but I think it was close to $1,000 just in loose change that we donated for the for the policemen to buy the toys with. And then Addie Stiegel and Vivian Vaughn approached us with an FCCLA comfort kit project where they collect toiletries and personal items and build kits for families who have to spend a lot of time at the hospital because they have an ill child. And we donated over 2,000 items and they were able to make 30 full kits and then 250 loose items that they can give to the hospital. So we really, I just, generosity went crazy in our building this last month, and that was awesome. Um, we also had a PTI, PTA movie night uh, with Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus, and we had a, 250 kids and parents, and uh, like Bloomsdale, we had cocoa and crafts and pictures and Moody Polar Express, and everyone wore their jammies, and it was very fun. And then uh, uh, we also had a holiday shop with volunteers, and all the kids got to go in and buy little treats for their parents. So there will be a lot of cute gifts this year. <laughs> uh, student recognition. We continue each week by having our Bragging Dragon Wall and our uh, leading our morning announcements with a leader focus. And so we're down to second grade now. We began with fifth, and they just they get cuter each month. So uh, if you ever happen to be in the building around eight o'clock, stop in and listen to announcements. Our student of the month luncheon in October or in November recognized habit three. Put thing, first things first. And our December luncheon is Thursday, and it's habit number four, think win-win. So the students vote within their classroom who they think is a student that most exhibited that habit. So they pick, they pick it themselves. And our attendance continues, attendance continues to soar. We have a building average of over 96% so far this school year. And fifth grade has raced to the top with 97.12%. In, um, since our last count, it, we do we count every three weeks. So uh, there, it seems contagious. They're like all about coming to school right now. So it doesn't hurt that they get a little party. Don't <laughs> any last kids a party. Um, on December third, we treated the kids to an APR celebration because they earned it as well last year. So we went to the pack and saw the movie Inside Out, and gave the teachers a little bit of time off, and we supervised that. And it was a natural tie into Mrs. Greminger's counseling um, curriculum because it's all about emotions and feelings. So that was good. They loved it. Uh, we've been doing some team building as well. Uh, we have a crazy door decorating contest going on right now. So if you pop in, uh, stop by and see all our crazy Christmas doors. They went wild. Uh, tomorrow is a silly sweater <coughs> day. So there's going to be some good outfits going on. The kindergartners are caroling, and of course we have our parties on Friday. So, um, on December 1st, we had our Christmas music program, and Mrs. Bowman did not disappoint. The third graders did uh, a Flakes Christmas, and we all learned that snow and dirt makes snurt, and so that's the new word in our building, snurt. And the fourth graders danced and sang to a Pirate's Christmas. So they did a great job, and as always, Mrs. Bowman did a great job. Uh, we continue our training with Bloomsdale. We've had second, third, fourth, and fifth grade trainings in the end of November and so far in December. And our RTI teams met both yesterday and today, and we have new teams of students ready and in place for January 4th when we come back for our differentiated instruction groups. Uh, like Bloomsdale, Miss Culligan comes for the MU Extension Nutrition Program, and the kids love that, and it's a natural tie into their science curriculum. 
And we have become a feature teacher and super staff recognition program in our building too. And many nominees were received. And this morning at our faculty meeting, uh, Mrs. Lacey Bowman was chosen for our feature teacher. And our staff winner was Mr. Justin Roth. And their colleagues had really wonderful things to say about Mrs. Bowman, that she's an exceptional listener, both to students and adults. She is someone who stands out stands out for all she does. Lacey goes above and beyond to help her students get what they need. Her performances and her time that she puts into them show her dedication towards her job and her students. She has inspired me to look at all situations in a more positive way. And another uh, colleague said, Lacey works so hard for amazing music programs and they are always fantastic. Uh, colleagues said that Mr. Roth displays a genuine concern for the betterment of each student as well as taking the time to build a positive relationship with each child he comes into contact with. He always has a smile on his face and it doesn't matter what time of the day it is. He has built great relationships with the students and he works that he works with from high fives to positive feedback to singing songs with them. He has <clears throat> he has his laid back what he is laid back but goes above and beyond to put the students first. He even goes to PTA events just because. He reminds me informally to be the best teacher I can be. So uh, both of them received several nominations. So we're happy to have taken on that staff recognition program because we felt like it was really overdue in our building. So thanks. Thank you. Good evening, Good evening everyone. Mm -hmm. I was sitting here thinking as uh, the two elementary principals, we've stolen a lot of stuff from <laughs> We're doing the seven habits, and she's talking about them, and we've got kids coming up to the office um, telling how they use the seven habits in the morning when we do announcements, too. We've stolen the attendance stuff, and we put it up on the wall now, and the kids get excited or upset that, that they're not in the lead. We, we have sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade, so the, the first week we did at the eighth grade was the low on total poll, so they had a big comeback this last week. They were really happy about that, so thank you guys. I can't wait in a couple years whenever all this starts building and then we get them and they're used to what what the seven habits are and the attendance stuff it's, it's going to be neat to see i'm looking forward to that we also had the apr celebration on thursday november 19th in conjunction with the high school we also had a modified schedule allowed the teachers a little extra time to eat they really enjoyed that thank you dr Lindsay. thank you board of education that that was really special to them um, mr olam has started a breakfast club sometimes in the morning and uh, kids can on their own, it's not required, come in, and depending on who they're Skyping with or Google chatting with in the world will depend on the time that, that they show up. First time it was like six o'clock, and I came over for that one, that was a little early. This last one was with, I'm gonna mess this up, Porta, Porta None, Italy, um, and this teacher in Italy was fantastic. She, she reminds me of our teachers here. She's somebody we would want here. And then, of course, that gets Mr. Oldham thinking we need to do a teacher exchange with some of these people. <laughs> so um, we started at 6.50 that morning. About 25 to 30 students showed up, and um, he's refined it a little bit as they go, and they have questions, groups of kids with questions that they ask the kids um, about their culture, about what things are like over there, and it's really been beneficial. It brings that cultural piece into St. Genevieve from all over the world. He's been, uh, last week, he did uh, Mexico all day long. He's going to finish up with Mexico, and I think he's got one in Spain um, on Thursday. So um, lots of cultural stuff coming in for that. Uh, we had the shelter-in-place drill on December 2nd as well. And i really like to hear what Lori said about what they did in their building because it brought up some good conversations about mm -hmm. shelter-in-place versus Alice training. And sheltering in place and just staying there is no longer compatible with what we've been taught Alice-wise. So that brought up some good conversations in our faculty meeting about where we go from here. So very beneficial. We had a dental clinic. Um, we had St. Genevieve Middle School play December 7th. Um, Christmas at the OK Corral and the Grinch. The kids did a great job. Mr. and Mrs. Otto worked very hard uh, for that, and so did the kids. Uh, they did a fantastic job. Uh, we have a positive climate committee that we started several months ago, um, kind of organizing teachers, going to games together to sh show support for the kids and stuff. Uh, they had a bright idea of getting together last Wednesday and having a cookie bake, so they 
prepared dough the night before and then got together after school and made cookies and I didn't know that they were going to put them on plates for everyone but I think they delivered to the board office and to the elementaries and the high school so they were able to share the joy the kitchen ladies were even happy they remembered them and took them a plate so everybody enjoyed that um, we had a Christmas dance on December 11th Mr. Bova thank you very much for coming that's always fantastic Lots of exciting activities that evening. Miss mm -hmm. Otto does go all out on that Christmas yes. dance. She really does a good job. Uh, Advanced Choir had a Christmas concert, 13th. Kids did a great job. Um, we also had chess with cheeseburgers last night at McDonald's. We have a new chess club. Um, we have, I think, 14 boards, so 28 players total, and from about 6.30 to about quarter to 8, the 28 people were playing. We had families come over from Valley that were playing. We had families in the community stop and play. Kids brought parents, uncles, and aunts, and all that stuff, so that's really beneficial. Um, brings the community aspect of it in and, and gets our kids out in the community. Um, he's gonna try to do that twice a month, and he's gonna contact McDonald's um, in the hopes that he gets to continue that. Uh, NJHS Star of the Month was Alexis Bova daughter of David and Julie Bova. Alexis is serving her first year in NJHS. She has been essential all year, being present at almost every volunteering opportunity. She served at St. Genevieve Middle School Open House, St. Genevieve Homecoming Dance, St. Genevieve Middle School Volleyball Concessions, Halloween Happenings at the Community Center, and many more. Her NJHS advisors, Mrs. Sharon Fowler and Mrs. Amy Rowland, come commend and thank Alexis for her service to the organization. Congratulations, Alexis. Uh, we also had a featured teacher this month, uh, nominated by our colleagues, Julia Fowler. I would like to nominate Julia Fowler for the featured teacher of the month of December. She really cares for her students and takes great care in ensuring all her students understand the material. She presents the material in a variety of ways and uses games and comes up with interesting ideas. Uh, she also cares for the faculty and staff here at St. Genevieve Middle School. She is friendly and fun to be around and also someone you can turn to with issues and then Miss LaRue adds hers and it goes on for an entire paragraph. I'm not going to read them. <laughs> There's lots of, uh, Julia will understand the Monica reference, but every time we send something out, Julia likes to organize it in her own way because I don't know if she thinks it's better or if it just makes sense to her, but then she shares it with everybody else. So we call her Monica from Friend. So congratulations, Julia. Um, and lastly, from St. Genevieve Middle School faculty and staff, everybody knows uh, what a blessing it is to work here at St. Genevieve Middle School. So from our families to your families, have a very Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm next to Katie this evening. <laughs> 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 so hello. Um, we just have some congratulations to start off with. So congratulations to Dylan Burr for taking first place in the VFW's Voice of Democracy contest and Tom Singleman for taking third. Congratulations to Morgan Shank, Anthony Rowe, and Austin Brewer for being named to the 2015 Fall Dream Team for football, Emma Bowser for volleyball, and Taylor Werner, Maya German, and Ben Nagger for cross country. Also another congratulations to Morgan Shank for making the All-State second team offensive line and Anthony Rowe for making All-State third team running back. Congratulations to Thomas Engelman for earning the highest rank of Boy Scouts, Eagle Scout. His project was the construction of a classroom at the future Hawkcrest Nature Center in Bloomsdale, sponsored by the World Bird Sanctuary. The American FFA degree is bestowed upon a select group of students in recognition for their years of academic and professional excellence and was awarded to this, this year to SGHS alum Tori Yates at the 88th National FFA Convention and Expo in Louisville, Kentucky. The St. Genevieve High School Future Business Leaders of America, Student Council, and National Honor Society held their annual Christmas dinner for our local senior citizens on Thursday, December 10th. St. Genevieve High School Choir held their annual Christmas concert on Sunday, December 13th under the direction of Michelle Jokers and they had a special guest direct Carol the Bells, and that was Mr. Steve Zusman. Um, the St. Jude High School competitive speech and debate team recently traveled to Second High School where they had an outstanding finish and took second place overall in the tournament. The individual first place results are Caitlin Apt and Madison Rainey in public forum debate and Madison Jerush in Lincoln Douglas debate. Also, we'd like to congratulate Abby Stolzer for placing fifth in Program of Interpretation at the Pattonville Tournament. 
And we would like to congratulate Ms. Taylor Werner for placing fifth at Foot Locker Nationals and being named an All-American First Team. A first Team All-American. That's my page. And now there's more. <laughs> On Mr. Haney's other half. <laughs> okay, students at St. Genevieve High School and Mr. Anthony Eubanks' classes recently put their bridges to the test at the MoDOT's 12th Annual Bridge Building Competition. The students from St. Genevieve High School received first place for the best overall performance. In addition, five students were recognized for building the lightest bridges that carried the greatest loads. The top winners were first place Dalton Giesler, third place Daniel Vaith, and fifth, pl fifth place Austin Brewer. SGHS also had two other students finish in top 10 positions, ninth place Trey Humphreys and 10th place Logan Reinhardt. This allowed St. Genevieve to capture five of the 10 spots in this competition. The Dragons showing character for SGHS quarter one are ninth grader Alexis Martin, 10th grader Kylie Solkowski, 11th grader Alana Crump, and 12th grader Brittany Marshall. The SGMS and SGHS faculty, staff, and National Junior Honor Society members nominate staff and students for kind acts. The award recipient for first quarter kindness award for SGHS is Lena Johnson. The Megan Meyer Foundation held its annual leader workshop on November 23, 2015 at Maryville University in St. Louis, Missouri. 200 high school students and school officials attended including 23 students from St. Genevieve High School. The students represented four organizations from Girls Taking Actions, National Honor Society, mentors, and student council. The St. Genevieve High School chapter of Girls Taking Action recently held a cupcake competition. Seven teams consisting of three to four members on each team participated in the event. Each team was allowed to select two ingredients and then randomly assign a third one. First place was awarded to Abby Bates, Deandra Boland, and Rebecca Gons. The St. Genevieve High School chapter of Skills USA will be holding a fundraising event on Thursday, December 17th hosting a movie night at the St. Genevieve R2 Performing Arts Center, featuring National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Admission is $3 for adults and $2 for students. Please bring your family and friends and come join Skills USA for a great Christmas movie. The SGHS students and staff would like to wish the Board of, of Education members and their families a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Yeah, I, I don't know how these students were selected in coming in. <laughs> they this they, but they seem to, yeah, they, they're very coordinated. They, they've all dressed, uh, uh, dressed alike and, and those kinds of things. So, uh, um, oh, yeah. um, but I want to tell you that, that uh, their recent success at the, uh, the state cross country uh, meet was extremely impressive. And, and I've been to several of those state cross country matches. My, uh, daughter ran when she was in high school in Ball State and, and that sort of thing, but uh, I had not been back to one in a while, and I went this year. Uh, and if you ever get an opportunity uh, to go see that, it's really a phenomenal event. Uh, and of course, it helped that we dominate, right? <laughs> right. Um, but uh, anyway, I wanted to, to commend them. I want to introduce Coach Jet. Uh, I know that he has some. Uh, something he'd like to say. First of all, I'd like to thank you for your time. And uh, secondly, I want to preface this, we're just going to sign trophies tonight, but we came back from about three or four years ago, we came back from Lake State, Lake State track meet. And uh, so I decided to sign it back for the trophy, and I think it's important that we get this down for prosperity, because we've got quite a few trophies now. In my mind, I have to, I can't remember who was on what team, so <laughs> i got to go back and look. But now we just got to turn the trophy around. So I thought it'd be a, uh, a nice way to recognize these people for their their hard work and their uh, successes as well. So we'll just get started. What do you want to go first? Uh, right up here. Uh, come right up here, for young man. Conference district and place second at the state meet.
one Sharpie is all you can get. That's all we can get. I can find another silver one right now. Don't you point it out. <laughs> All right, this is the boys' first district championship. <laughs> Good job, boys. Thank <laughs> you. 
mean, they represented the district very well, both teams. Um, and uh, we were lucky proud of with, with both of them and, and the coaching staff. Mm -hmm. so. school math teacher. I teach 7th and 8th grade. Um, I'm just, I'm not going to read all of this, but I wanted to give you guys a copy of just um, some of our vocabulary and expectations that we're going to teach in the middle school level. Um, this first page is kind of my outline, and then the next couple are our grade level overview. So that's just an idea of what is in this packet. Um, this summer we spent um, aligning our curriculum from 6th to 7th to 8th grade. And we worked really hard in getting our benchmarks aligned with the Missouri Learning Standards, which is based on the Common Core, and figuring out how we are going to make sure all of our students are ready from 6th to 7th to 8th grade, and just building on the same concept and just adding um, more to it every year. So we wanted a flow. Um, to the curriculum, and so that's what we spent our summer doing with our curriculum development. Um, our benchmarks that we created are cumulative for our semester, so our first semester benchmark we just gave, or we're going to give in a couple days, um, is very similar from 6th to 7th to 8th, it's just the concept is getting harder and harder and harder, or more difficult. Um, as far as our math enrichment and re remediation. We have two things going on. We have enrichment programs, which is our seventh and eighth grade advanced math classes. We have um, a math class for about, depending on the year, 20 to 30 students that will go on to the advanced math classes. And those classes are based on their state test results as well as their benchmark results with, um, with us as teachers. So we're looking at both of those two assessments. And then um, they do have grade requirements to stay enrolled in those classes. Um, as far as remediation goes, we do have a, lab, a math lab set up for our eighth grade students. Um, they're pretty much double dipped in um, those in two math classes. So they see more of the concept with two different teachers or maybe just two classes with the same teacher. So they have more exposure to the content. So they have a better chance to succeed. Um, and then we also have certain our students with IEPs. There are 70% of those students that are actually in co-teaching classes that have IEPs in math. Um, they're exposed to our entire grade level curriculum, which has helped our um, scores with our IEP students because they are exposed to everything um, that they will need as opposed to being in a small group setting where they may or may not hit those different topics. Um, but 30% are in program level math classes and they have very individualized goals, very individualized instruction. In those um, as far as technology with the Chromebooks, we have um, a pretty good handle on our technology within the math department, though we're getting better and better every year. Um, our lessons are supplemented sometimes with videos if we teach it during class and maybe they don't understand, they have access to our links um, on our web pages to where they can go to our, either our videos or videos that we found online so they can use um, those, different, um, those different things to help them with their learning. Um, we also have a quick feedback and for the students and the teacher with those websites, with different websites we have found and we've utilized in our classroom. And with the quick feedback, it gives us as teachers a chance to check quickly their comprehension and if they don't understand it right away, we can go back and reteach it almost on the spot. Um, and also with technology, we are now implementing different kind of product outcomes so it's not always an assessment, paper, pencil. Uh, a lot of times we do that, but sometimes now they're creating stuff online. They're creating um, computer-generated um, assessments and then submitting them to us either through Google Slides or through different websites like Linspace or Prezi to where we are not just doing the um, paper, pencil assessments in more school math anymore. They're giving us other technology-based assessments. That's pretty much all I have. Thank you guys. Do you have any questions? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have 
you guys have any questions on us? Three years and about seven minutes, right? Yep. Three years here. <laughs> I, I just want to seven minutes. <laughs> I just want to say what a good job they do. Uh, being a father of a middle school student, believe it or not, but I can't, uh, I can't help them with this math homework. So they, they do a good job. So I have to rely on my son being able to hopefully grasp what he's learning in school, and, and he does, and he does well. So. And his son is in that advanced seventh grade class, and we have to run, we have to go quick, because we have to cover the seventh grade material and the eighth grade material in a year. So it's a, it's a pretty fast paced program. So, but they do, it. they do a pretty good job. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. To the property liability insurance. Uh, yes, this is uh, you have some information in your board packet. Uh, this is uh, our 20th year with uh, music, uh, which uh, is the Missouri United School Insurance Council. Uh, the huge majority of districts uh, and several community colleges across the state are members of, of that organization. Uh, they provide our property liability and workers' compensation insurance. Some information in your board packet that, that breaks that information down, but I would definitely recommend that you uh, uh, continue to utilize uh, such a large pool that, that helps uh, uh, protect you from, from risk. Uh, and, and not only do they provide the insurance, but they provide a variety of other services uh, with risk management and, and building inspections and, and a variety of other things. There's really no, there's nobody else that can come close it, to what yeah, there, there's no one that can provide the kind of group protection uh, that you have when you have close to 500 school districts uh, that are all, um, you know, it just, so, it, it creates such a large coverage pool that if there is a major uh, claim in one district that's offset by uh, no claims in the other districts, uh, the, uh, the insurance rates that we get through them uh, have been very, very stable. And I don't know if you noticed, uh, but um, I think uh, this year's rate was um, uh, a third of a percent increase uh, or so over the prior year. So, I mean, it, it's it's really a good program, uh, and it does provide us that safety. There's some schools that are. There, there are really few small. schools, especially really large districts. Oh, really large. Yeah, typically it's really large districts. Occasionally, uh, there will be districts that will, you know, for whatever reason, will uh, will get out of the program. Um, typically, they'll there's going to be a local company or, or a local broker that uh, uh, provides the same kind of coverage. Uh, the thing with music, uh, unless you can get a five-year rate guarantee. You get out of the music, it's written in stone. You're out for five years now. So, uh, uh, really, it, it's, it's one of those things where there's safety in numbers. Uh, this, along with health insurance, uh, are two cases where, uh, where that really carries itself out. So. I move to approve the rates with music to Missouri United School Insurance Council as listed. A motion and a second. I'll say by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Before we go on, every one of you has told us Merry Christmas. So, on behalf of the Board of Education and our families, to all of you, we wish you a Merry Christmas and thank you for all you've done. Thank you, guys. Okay, Mr. McDaniel. I move that the Board of Education hold a closed meeting with a closed record and a closed vote following the regular open meeting on January 19, 2016 to be held in the R.W. Thomas Library at 715 Washington Street, St. Jones, Missouri, for the purpose of discussing and voting upon the following items of business. Legal action, causes of action, or litigation. Lease, purchase, or sale of real estate. Hiring, firing, disciplining, or promoting particular employees. Proceedings involved 
seeing the mental or physical health of an identifiable individual, scholastic probation, expulsion, or graduation of identifiable individuals, testing and examination materials, welfare cases, cases of identifiable individuals, preparation and negotiation with employee groups, software codes for electronic data processing and documentation thereof, specifications for competitive bidding until approved or published, sealed bids and related documents until the bids are open, sealed proposals and related documents until all proposals are rejected, or any documents related to a negotiated contract until the contract is executed. Individually identifiable personnel records, performance ratings, or records pertaining to employees or applicants for employment. Records protected from disclosure by law. Scientific and technological innovation to which the owner has a proprietary interest. Records relating to municipal hotlines established for reporting of abuse and wrongdoing. Confidential privilege communication with the monitor. Operational guidelines, policies, and specific response plans for preventing or responding to a critical incident. Existing or proposed security systems and structural plans of district property. The portion of a record that identifies security system or access codes. Records that identify would allow unauthorized access to or unlawful disruption of the configuration of components or the operation of a computer, computer system, computer network, or telecommunications network. Credit card numbers, personal identification numbers, digital certificates, physical and virtual keys, access codes, or authorization codes that are used to protect electronic transactions. I further move that notice this meeting and attendance to the agenda be posted as required by law. Second. I have a motion and a second. Roll call. Eric Bowser? Yes. Dave Bova? Yes. Charlie Crowder? Yes. Tom Dunsey? Yes. Harry McDaniel? Yes. Martha Riesinger? Yes. Rick Rudolph? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. We can go to a closed session with a closed record and a closed vote after a short break. Okay. And motion and a second. All in favor, by the